Hi everybody, it's Tyler here at Sunshine Showdown, checking in with 1523C. It's Charisma coming in out of Washington State. Charisma here, coming off a rebuild a little while ago into a great robot. Here are some key things that we're gonna be highlighting on this robot. A really cool PTO that I want you to pay attention to on this. A great aligner as well too. And they're gonna be talking a bit more about their drive and their switch over from their prior robot to what they have now and why their drive base has been so crucial in their success here at this event. You'll learn a little bit more about their code and a couple other great things as well too. Let's learn here more about them here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grill Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Max, lots to cover on this robot here. One of the things that we were talking about earlier was your uh, updates to your drive base. Talk to me about why it's so critical, and then there's a lot of other great things this robot will be highlighting too. Right, so first off, we, ha we have like a 77 watt drive on this robot, which means that we have a 5.5 motor, 5.5 watt motor in here tucked behind, which is geared up so that it can run at the same speed as the 11 watt motors. And then we run this on the 343 RPM on four inch wheels, which basically allows us to have as much torque as possible to push the other robots around while still maintaining like enough speed to hit the fast D scores and stuff, which is uh, which has really made us like better at match play in all of our matches and basically just help me as a driver with the hooking and um, like basically just driving around. Uh, we found that it's better than our old one because it gives us more power to push against other robots and it's also it, but it keeps the same speed so that's uh that's our drive base did you have to make any sacrifices in going 77 watts on your drive like did you have to take away from other areas on your robot right so because we have 77 watts on the drivetrain we only have 11 watts on the intake here which means we have to run the whole intake on just this uh, one motor and then so uh, because we want to be able to store blocks and also score blocks uh, we have this pto mechanism on the side here, which just has, it's kind of covered by the license plate, but uh, there's this gear that's cut out uh, with the custom cut poly that holds the holds the intake in, so it doesn't intake. So when we want to intake, we can just intake like so, and then the top roller stops. And then when we want to score, we can just do it like that. Is that a pretty fluid process for you to switch in between like yeah. a key to match play? Yeah. It's just one button, so it's pretty similar to how our old one worked, where we just have, uh, but instead of having just one pistonized stopper, we have our top roller that's also stopped. Very cool. Anything else that you want to highlight uh, in terms of mechanical side on this robot? Uh, we have this, um, like, uh, middle goal D score, which just goes up to help us, like, uh, basically push out the blocks from the middle goal. And uh, we have this as an active mechanism instead of a passive one, so that I don't have to, like, turn or do anything about it, and we can just lift it and push. And then we also have this double park mechanism, which just has, which just has this clamp that when you, uh, that's like the, the balls just clamped into the robot and then you can uh, hold the robot still. And then we have the, this, these three pistons that push down on the block and this lets us double park on the parking barrier. So I gotta ask him that it seems, you know, there's a little, uh, maybe more complexity on that than what we've seen versus some other teams. What made you want to choose that Ron? Why has it worked out so well for you? So basically this just the, uh, makes it so we don't need to use a preload. And also it's on the back of the robot, which is where like, uh, which is where like the weight is. So we can make sure that the front of the robot can go up onto the parking barrier as smooth as possible. And then the three pistons are uh, really strong so that uh, the block basically, we can always double park no matter like how much PSI we use throughout the match. And have you guys made any changes to your, uh, your wings or aligners at all? Right, so for our aligner mechanism, we used to have this made out of plastic, similar to some other teams, but then uh, we wanted to use our plastic on the rest of the robot, so, uh, for example, on the sleds, so we decided to bend this hashing axle. It's just bent with a hammer. Basically, it's like uh, it's smooth so that you can still uh, align fast with the long hole, but it's also really stiff, so uh, it's like it doesn't bend at all. And this just helps uh, the hook, like, these four. Last thing I want to ask you, you know, here at Sunshine Showdown, great competition that we've seen so far, and your team's been doing really well. What are some of the uh, key attributes to your success in terms of match play so far? 
Uh, for me, I think it's just really fast hooking, uh, scoring like less blocks because we have a less strong intake, like two or three, and then just hooking really quickly and then descoring the opponent's blocks. Just keeping the score numbers low and then keeping our blocks in the control zones are really is uh, what our like effective strategy is. Let's pass over to Alan. Alan, you and I were uh, talking earlier too that you use uh, a few different distance sensors in your robot for reset. Can you just talk to me more about how that's being implemented and some of the advantages to that? Let me, uh, let me, let me, let me start with the position tracking of our robot, which, which we're doing within an inertial sensor on the back, as, uh, as, as, as well as, well as, as well as using the, as well as using the motor encoders, and, 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 and we do this so that, and we do this so that during, so that during the autons we can, we can, we can know, we can know where our, our robot is, but, uh, but. But, but 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 one problem that we but one problem that we found found is that found is that the tracking drift is a is a big problem, which is when the robot's actual position differs from where the robot thinks it is, and, and this is a, a big problem because then we can't align with the middle goals, the long goals, or or or, or the match loaders. And and the, and the solution we found was to use use distance sensors. You can see one on the right, one on the left, and, and one front facing. So uh so 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 with that so that we can we can find the distance of our, of our of our robot from the wall it will wall and then we can know our absolute position on the field we actually iterated on this on this as well because because we, we realized that a lot of the times it, it's very difficult and very time consuming to get our, get our robot facing like directly in a cardinal direction especially during autons so and, and, and like and like if the if the robot turns at all the, the distance from the sensor to the wall is going to change which means our position is now is not inaccurate so, uh, so, so, so now in the latest version of our distance reset, we're taking the he heading of the, of the ro robot into account. So, say, say the wall is here. The wall is here. We, we can find the point, point like by projecting past the distance sensor, and, and then we also know like the straight point here. So we know the sh the short leg, the hypotenuse, and with that we can find the long leg, which is like the actual position of the robot is, is from the wall. And it's been a it's been a it's been a great help. Uh, our our autons, especially for skills, have been. On the routing side, at least, perfectly consistent. Um, we would have done better with getting the Auton win point, but the but the front end sensor has been has been moving a lot during this competition. We originally thought it wouldn't really be load bearing, so we just used the one Y to get the angle of it to be straight. But um, it, it it somehow got hit in one of the matches, so it so it bent a little bit, and we didn't really take take that into account in the code. So last last time our builder braced it a little more, so it can't move anymore. You know, looking into you know past here at Sunshine Show, any other improvements you can think of that you're like, hey, this might be something after we've been at this awesome competition that we might want to improve upon or implement? Uh, uh, yeah. So, um, fail safe, uh, fail fail safe during during autons. So for so for match autons, since the since since the time is so tight, if if our robot messes up on it on an action, we're we're not really gonna score that many blocks anyway. But for but for skills skills autons, where there's so much more time. We we it is it is realistic to implement fail safe. See, like if we if we go towards the match loader and we use the front end sensor to say, oh, we're a little too far from the wall to be actually in the match loader. We can in the code try again to go into the match loader again. So I think that'll improve the consistency of our autons and autons. One five two three C. Thank you so much for taking time. Congrats on a great run so far. We can't wait to see how you do here at Sunshine Showdown. Also, but some great uh, improvements. I think that teams, as you're thinking about improving your robots, you can pay attention to and learn from as well too. So best luck here. Thanks for being on Pits and Parts. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu first.